40 year highs in liberal food inflation is forcing more families into food banks than ever. Yesterday, the PBO said the savings the Liberals are claiming aren't transparent and has the finance minister looking more like Pinocchio. She's out to lunch while Canadians have to skip lunch. Will the finance minister show some compassion and cancel the cruel triple, triple, tripling of taxes on groceries? First of all, my honourable colleague is absolutely false. There is no tripling of taxes that is coming forward. As Canada moves towards a $170 per ton carbon tax by the year 2030, the federal government claims that this higher tax will have almost zero impact on the economy. But it has not yet provided any analysis to support that claim. Now, the first publicly available study on the impacts of a $170 per ton carbon tax in Canada finds that a carbon tax of this magnitude will have significant effects on the economy and Canadian workers from coast to coast. In fact, the Canadian economy will shrink by 1.8%. In today's dollars, that would mean a loss of $37.8 billion. And more than 184,000 jobs will be lost. And those job losses will be felt across the country. Ontario will lose more than 85,000 jobs. In Quebec, there will be 39,000 fewer jobs. And across Atlantic Canada, nearly 5,000 jobs will be lost. In Western Canada, nearly 55,000 jobs will be lost as a result of the $170 per ton carbon tax. Government finances themselves will also be negatively impacted by the declining GDP and job losses. Assuming Ottawa intends to continue rebating the carbon tax revenue to Canadian households, the combined deficits for the federal and provincial governments will increase by $22.1 billion every year. And even after the rebate, the average Canadian worker will have $1,540 less income every year as a result of the higher carbon tax. Far from having zero impact on the economy, a $170 per ton carbon tax will impose real costs on the Canadian economy and Canadian workers nationwide. For more information, visit www.fraserinstitute.org. Mr. Speaker, they have had real opportunities to support Canadians, and at each opportunity, they have not. The Honourable Member for Calgary Forest Lawn. Right. Disinformation is a concerted attempt to try and obfuscate uh, the truth and to try and confuse you. Why would anyone take advice from a minister who broke Passports Canada and Service Canada? Or an immigration minister who broke immigration? Or a housing minister who broke housing? Or a transport minister who broke our airports? Or a finance minister who broke the banks of Canadians? Or a prime minister who broke his promises?